we just got back from doing our measurements um, on our tow vehicle and our travel trailer. So now it's time to set up our hitch bar. Ultimate goal of this hitch bar setup so that everybody understands is that when you're hitched up and you're ready to go, your travel trailer is sitting parallel to the ground, right? And that means measuring parallel to the ground. So I uh, definitely don't use bubble levels and things because it'll lie to you almost every time. So make sure you take that measurement, even though you've got the perfect eyeball, I know everybody does, the perfect eyeball, make sure you still get that measurement. And uh, that's in the manual too. So um, I haven't transferred these yet to this sheet, but I'm going to, so I had a little uh, cheat sheet here, um, but we're gonna put these in our manual here. Uh, we, we gave this guy, or gave this to you guys so that you would have it to keep with you at all times. And uh, we'll transfer them into here so that no matter what, You've always got this with you. So if we have a receiver height measured on our vehicle was 24 inches to the top of that uh, opening. And then our trailer height to the top of the ball on the coupler piece was uh, 25 inches. So you take five and a half inches away from that uh, coupler height on there. That's gonna give you 19 and a half inches, right? The deal with our tow vehicle today, which is, uh, it's, you know, it, nothing's ever perfect, nothing's ever easy, right? It's uh, got a modified suspension on it. So we've got a little bit more of a settle than you normally would have. We've got about a five inch settle on this vehicle. And uh, so we're gonna have to accommodate that with this hitch bar drop because ultimately we want it to be parallel to the ground, right? So normally you guys can probably figure about an inch, um, which uh, will translate into almost about a hole on these guys of uh, drop or settle. Um, I hate to say squat, but it's more of a settle on the vehicle. So let's start with that. So if we have a 24 inch uh, receiver height on this, less about that five inch settle, that sits us at about 19 inches, right? So our trailer, travel trailer sits at 25 inches, less the five and a half, because that's where the opening for the Pro Pride is, five and a half inches lower, sits at about 19 and a half. So we've got a situation where literally we're gonna have kind of a, a uh, upside down T situation with this hitch bar setup, which will kind of make it uh, nice and easy for us to, uh, to do. Um, so if you look at the manual, uh, you can go through all the steps here on page seven and eight, if you'd like to. Um, I've also, once you get this math figured out, you can actually just go to the pictures because we've kind of done all that homework for you and actually created pictures for you. So once you figure out your difference, which in our case is like less than an inch, it's, uh, it's right here, a zero to one inch difference right there. Um, I already figured in my settle, which is five inches, but uh, we can throw in a different situation where you've got a vehicle that's like this, but it doesn't have any kind of a settle, um, or at least doesn't have a five inch settle, just like a normal inch, that would kind of change that for us. So we'd have a little bit more of a drop on that potential one. So. Anyhow, let's go, let's get back to this guy. Um, at zero and one inch difference, that's our picture. So we're gonna set this hitch bar up uh, according to that guy right there. So let's get right into that. So the hitch bar assembly is right here. You've noticed on this guy, the receiver, or the receiver bar, that you've got two holes. You've got a hole at the top, a hole at the bottom. That's where the tilt pin goes, right? Yes, you have to use that tilt pin. Um, it, is, uh, it is part of the system that actually allows you to uh, once this thing is configured, um, I guess another thing actually to note real quick is it's not about having this thing parallel to the ground when it's in your receiver right there necessarily. It's actually about being parallel to the ground, the whole receiver system once you have a load on it. And that's what that tilt pin is actually gonna do for us. So that's why it's important to put in there. So in our situation, the tilt pin is always gonna go on the top. It says that right in the manual. And we start out with two, uh, Two washers on this tilt pin so that's going to give us the angle that we need depending on your tongue weight we've got a pretty heavy tongue weight on this uh, toy hauler but depending on what he's hauling um, i think we figured it was around 1200 pounds tongue weight so it's pretty stout but depending on what he's hauling it's actually going to come up on that so he's not going to have as much tongue weight but we've got a three quarter ton pickup so we're going to just do two on this you can add more if you need to but uh, that's kind of down the road there we'll talk about that a little bit when we set up your weight distribution so the tilt pin goes in the upper location always, right? So that guy goes right in there. In ours, it kind of makes it easy on me, not by design, but uh, we we're actually able to just uh, slide this guy in and there's gonna be three bolts, all the same size. One of them is gonna be the pivot bolt right here, right? So the pivot bolt is always one above the bottom bolt, all right? So you can get that pivot bolt in there 
Maybe. I say it's going to be easy, and then it's not. Right there. We'll flip that guy around. And you're going to have your lock washer and your bolt. So that's the first one. You've got two more. They're going to go in these slots. This is designed so that it actually has flexibility, depending on how many washers you need to get that downward pitch on this guy. Um, that's what that would accommodate for. So as we put these guys in, you're going to have a washer on either side of that because we, again, want it to be able to move if we need it to. So one's there. That guy goes together. Another washer. Another bolt, another washer. So I'm just loosely doing these guys for now because we want to make sure that we're all set up good. But that's the end product right there. Let me flip this around right like that. You can see the bolts are there. You don't have a uh, washer on this side because it's got the lock washer on it. And that's the one that we use for that right there. And that is going to be our hitch bar assembly for this particular vehicle. And now we'll take this guy over to the truck and uh, get it installed on there. So I'm not going into a full torque right now. Uh, we're just getting this tight enough so that it'll sit in here. And uh, the only reason we're actually doing this, um, you wouldn't necessarily have to, but we put it in the manual, is uh, to allow us to actually do, uh, to put the main onto this, to put it onto the uh, coupler there instead of having to like raise that guy up onto this. So. Um, that's really why we're actually installing this on here now. Other than that, you really wouldn't necessarily have to. But uh, it's a good idea just to uh, be able to manage moving it. So I'm just going to get those snug. Important thing to remember when you do finally get this guy tightened up is the tilt pin on here. Make sure that it's actually tight and this is, piece is actually butted up against that so that it doesn't have any slop at all between these two because if there's a gap, you'll have a problem with that because it will absolutely move. There's lots and lots of force that goes through this guy. Other than that, we'll get this eye lifted onto here. Put a pin in. Maybe. And I sweep relatively kind of lucked out with this one too because it's a, a beautiful brand new truck um, and we're able to actually get this thing slid in there nice and easy it is a two and a half inch receiver so that there's absolutely no slop in this guy at all um, as you as you can see um, you can use a reducer sleeve a lot of people will do that and then just do the two inch but uh, ultimately to eliminate as much uh, movement as possible we suggest going with the uh, size that your truck actually has on it so that's kind of where we're at with that. One other thing to kind of note too is it is a new truck, so we're actually able to slide this in pretty relatively easy. If you've got an older vehicle um, that has some buildup or things inside of here, sometimes you may have to actually take something and kind of chisel out any of that old rust or anything that's on there. Um, I know my own pickup, it's, uh, it's like a 2012, so I've got a little bit more of that in there. So I actually had to kind of get that just extra buildup on there. And sometimes there'll be a weld around the inside edge it's got a lip that comes on the inside too. Just keep in mind that you may have some of that stuff that you may have to kind of uh, grind out a little bit. If you don't have to grind on the bar, the better obviously, because we want to try and keep it as tight as possible and that's the ultimate goal. So just a couple of tips there for you.